next question is from Satsi underscore Posh. What has your relationship with Mark taught you about yourself? And what are some of your goals for 2018? Being with Mark has really taught me so much about myself. And I always knew or heard how when you get with someone that you truly love and that you truly connect with, they are a mirror of you. Your partner is a mirror of you and they start to show you who you really are. And I'm not gonna lie to y'all, through especially this past year of us living together, because we've basically been living together for almost a year now and living outside of our home state out of Texas being in Oregon and really being on our own together has really highlighted a lot of parts of myself that I don't like I straight up I have been shown a lot of parts of myself that I'm just like whoa I didn't know that that's how who I was does that make sense like there are ways in which that I reacted in certain situations, small situations, nothing like drastic or big because obviously we're still together, we're happy. But definitely things about myself that I had to work through. Um, I learned how selfish I was and I'm still learning that and it's something that I'm working on. He is one of the most selfless people that I know and so there are so many times, uh, so many times when I'm like, Dang, I wish I could react like you in this particular situation. I wish I wasn't so emotional. I wish I wasn't so stubborn. I wish I wasn't so this or so that. And it was through different experiences that I've had with him where I've been shown that of myself. And I think that's the biggest blessing and biggest challenge of being with someone on a serious level and on a deep level is that you're put in situations that no one else can get you to. No one else can get you to that deep, deep emotional place and then see how you respond in situations in that deep emotional place. And while, yes, there are times that I, you know, impressed myself with the way that I responded, there were also a lot of times where I was like, whoa, like you've got to change that. Like you need to change your heart about this particular thing or that particular thing you need to be more compassionate in this situation or that situation and so I think that the biggest part I think that I've learned is just recognizing my selfishness which I don't see selfishness as a bad thing I think that selfishness for me has come out of self-preservation in previous relationships it's come from me being a child of divorced parents, of going back and forth from house to house my whole, my whole life and not ever really feeling like I belonged in one place and feeling comfortable there. And I think that created this sense of like, worry about me, make sure I'm okay and not to connect emotionally deeply with people. I can connect at a very comfortable level with people. I do that very effortlessly and easily because I'm genuine. But what I mean is like being really, really vulnerable. That's something that I didn't realize that I struggled with so much until I got with Mark. And you guys, I have been in long relationships, okay? I've been in a seven-year relationship on and off. I've been in another serious like little bit less than a year relationship with somebody else. I have had situationships. I have gone through a lot of different types of relationships with men, okay? And my relationship with Mark has been the most challenging, right? But so, so, so worth it. Like somebody who can stick with me through some of the stuff that I have put him through emotionally, um, that takes a lot. And so... I think that if I can name the things, it would be I learned how selfish I was and now I'm able to work on that selfishness and start to learn how to care and think of others more than I think of myself. And then two, how to be really, truly vulnerable because you can be fake vulnerable all day. I used to be fake vulnerable all the time and I didn't realize I was being fake vulnerable until... I got in situations that required me to be actually vulnerable and I was like, whoa, 
no, not like this, not like that. I'm not ready for this. You're overwhelming me. Get me out of here. I was like freaking the hell out. So now that I've been able to recognize those things, um, I work on those and he works with me on those. And other than that, it's been great. We have lots of fun. We laugh a lot. Um, we bounce ideas off of each other from work stuff to personal life stuff things that we're just thinking about we watch all types of shows together we travel together i mean it's been really great it's been really great so yeah we're really happy <laughs> y'all my phone is about to die actually so i might not be able to get through all these questions but um we're gonna keep it moving okay as told by Amber Janelle asked, as the YouTube and media world is consistently and rapidly evolving, what advice would you give to up incoming bloggers slash vloggers? Also, if you could give any advice to your early college age self, what would it be? Love you, girl. Thanks, girl. Love you, too. So I guess the first part of your question was um, advice for up and coming bloggers, YouTubers. I have a video where I give a lot of tips and tricks, um, and advice, uh, that I filmed maybe like a year and a half or a year or two ago, whatever. I'll link it here for you guys. But I would say, honestly, find your niche. Okay. Find your thing that no one else is doing. And that is possible in the beauty space. That is possible in this vlogging YouTube world. It's just that you have to bring it and you have to be able to tap into your thing and create content that reflects that. So I know that there's so many people out there creating content and it's really, really easy to copy or to even not realize that you're copying other people. So what I would suggest is make sure that you are gaining inspiration. You're seeing what the level of expectation is for quality of your content in the space that you're trying to go into and then up that, okay? So you wanna always be above the curve. You wanna be above the trend, in front of the trend. You wanna create the trend. That is a part of what goes into being an influencer, a YouTuber, a blogger. You have to be able to forecast what's coming or be able to really, really capture what's happening right now really, really well. And not everybody can do that. That's where I think people lose sight and lose, get tripped up because they think that, oh, I just want to show like my makeup looks that I really like and the clothes that I really like. Okay, yes, that's great. We all love a good outfit and a good beat, you know what I'm saying? But what are you bringing to the table that is different, that is going to elevate you, that is going to make you stand out? There are so many small YouTubers and bloggers that have amazing content and they have, you know, beautiful setups and great lighting and camera settings and everything but they look just like everybody else if you look like everybody else if you're doing the same videos as everybody else or i can name four or five other people doing really really similar content as you and i can't differentiate your stuff between their stuff then why am i watching you and if you've got a great personality, that can carry you through. A lot of people have really awesome personalities and they have that ability to connect with their audience and you don't even care what they're talking about. You just want to watch them and hear them talk and stuff. But not everybody is like that. So you have to recognize what your strengths are and capitalize. So whether that is collabing with other people, which is the best way to do it, if you collab with people around your same audience size or maybe a little bit more, then that's a really great way to start connecting with audiences that you may not be tapping into yet. Now, I will say if you are a very small blogger or YouTuber, don't get your hopes up by contacting somebody who has 50,000, 100,000, a million followers or whatever because you're gonna set yourself up for failure. Recognize that that person built that audience through hard work and diligence and consistent and consistency and commitment, and it takes a lot. So when you ask to partner with somebody at that level, sometimes it's like, okay, if you wanna partner with me, how am I benefiting from this? Like, it needs to be a mutually beneficial opportunity. And so if you can offer somebody who has a larger following 
than you, something that is mutually beneficial to them and you, then great, you may have something. But if you're just trying to do a makeup look or a hair tutorial mashup or collab, then I, more times than not, people aren't gonna be down for it because it's just like, what are you giving to them? I'm giving you my audience. When I collab with you, I'm giving you my audience. So what am I getting back? You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? From Karen underscore V520 asked, my hair is wavy. I don't have pretty curls like you. I'm tired of having to straighten my hair all the time. I have tried many product and it always ends up frizzy. I didn't use hot tools for two months, but my hair was out of control and I could only wear it in a bun. Any advice, products, techniques, I need help. Listen, I'm a link my hair tutorial playlist down below for y'all and tell y'all that at the end of the day if you are frustrated with your hair process simplify it that is always my biggest advice is to simplify your regimen and build it back up so what I mean by that is cutting out you know all the different styles that you're trying to rock throughout the week focus in on perfecting one style if you want to perfect your wash and go Start from the foundation, get a great shampoo, get a great conditioner and get about two products. What you need is a cream leave-in conditioner, moisturizer, and some sort of product to hold the style in place, whether that be a mousse, a gel, a, another cream, an oil, whatever you wanna try out with and then test that regimen out for a month, okay? A month, yes, you need to stick to it for a month to just see how your hair works or even a couple weeks if you're too antsy about it. But stick, that's four products. That's not 20 products in a month. That's four products in a couple weeks or a month or whatever. Just simplify your regimen because a lot of times we get confused with the different products and how are they supposed to be used and my twist out didn't come right or oh, I should have air dried more. I mean, it's so much into it. You just gotta breathe, simplify it, find products that you like find techniques that you like and move on. I think the easiest techniques to do if you are struggling with like curl pattern differences, um, you're trying to find ways to wear your curls out but like they're damaged still so they're like weirdly shaped and stuff, best thing to do, braid outs, perm rod sets, flexi rod sets, those are always my go-tos. Anytime I ever felt like my hair was damaged or I felt like my hair just needed a switch up or I wanted a style that would last a couple days or three or four days, I would do one of those. So definitely check out my hair tutorials. Um, I have tons of them. So hopefully you can find something in there. The next question is from J underscore adore Kendra. She asked, how do you and Mark handle finances and paying bills since living together? Are there ever any disagreements about spending habits? Ooh, yes okay yes there is it finances are always going to be a touchy subject for basically everybody and for us it is a touchy subject especially when I have a little bit more freedom and and so when it comes to bills we basically work off of a what can you handle type of um scale I guess so I pay more bills because I make more money, but he's still paying his fair amount, if that makes sense. And we also are very fluid with our roles at home. So as far as like cleaning and cooking and um, different things around the house, we're very fluid with who does what. Be Sorry, y'all, I had to get Bolt again because he was just running around acting a fool. But yeah, so we kind of just divvy it up as we see fit that whatever works best for us at that time. Um, and that's just how it works for us. There are times when he, he doesn't get mad at me for my spending at all. He more so praises me and tells me that, you know, I should go get this or get that because I work really hard and that's it. But there are times when, because he's on a more fixed budget than I am, that he kind of like gets a little, um, he kind of gets a little stressed about his finances and I'm over here like screaming to him like, hey, I'm here, just ask me for help. Like I'm here, like whatever you need, whatever you want, I got you. 
But as a man, that's hard for him to deal with at times. And he doesn't ever like to ask me for money. He doesn't like to ask me for anything. And I can respect that. So we have a very open conversation when it comes to finances because we are very non-traditional in the ways in which that we even move as a couple. So, I mean... I mean, we have some traditional aspects of ourselves, but at the at, as far as like what we do for a living and like how we choose to divvy up like household chores and stuff like that, we're very like fluid, non-gender, you know, focused and stuff like that. The next question is from X Life Diaries X. Do you find it difficult trying to create new content that is different from other YouTubers while trying to keep your subs keep com- to keep coming back? Or have you mastered the content that works best for you? And lastly, do you think there is a future in YouTube if you keep making the same kind of content five years from now? I love watching you evolve and will stay loyal to your channel and the very, to the very no matter what. Oh, wait. Thank you, girl. I appreciate the support. There's a lot of questions in that one, so let me go ahead and start. So do you find it difficult trying to create new content that is different from other YouTubers? That's part one. I would say that it is... Difficult at times, yes, to create content that's different from other YouTubers because there's just so much content out there. There's only a certain amount of times you can do a wash and go or a a certain makeup look or whatever. And I think it's all about just putting your own personal spin on it. Like I said before, you have to find your niche. And I feel like I've found my niche in the way that I create my content and the way that I have built my platform. So even if I am recreating a look or recreating a hairstyle that I did a couple years ago my look for that video is going to be totally different than it was two years ago my insights will be different because I would have learned something over those two years to give something different to the look and then three a lot of times we just want to refresh you know what I'm saying so I have to look at my content as somebody who has been creating content for so long already i just have to tell myself okay how do i teach this lesson again in a new way in a more trendy way in a more now way and that's going to change from year to year from season to season so i think that's how i figure out ways to just create content consistently that is still inspiring and still something that I like and not like boring or the same old same old or whatever I would also say that I'm inspired by so many things and so many different people and so many different like looks and trends that come into play so even with creating content for years to come which I hope that I still get to do create content for years to come is that there's always going to be some trend or some new thing to kind of get inspo from to help shape that new content so if I'm doing um, a hair tutorial it may be a look that's more in trend right now versus something that wasn't in trend two years ago or whatever so that's that part and then the second part of the question was have you mastered the content that works best for you um to keep how do you balance um doing something different while keeping your your subs happy and stuff like that Again, I focus in on doing things that feel authentic and real to me that I feel like I would be happy to stand up next to and then I put that out. That's not always going to look the same. There are certain times where I feel less motivated to put makeup on and I post a lot of videos with no makeup on or there's Uh, certain moments where I'm always wearing makeup that I'm just like in a full glam mode where every video I do in that season I've got a full face of makeup on which I think I'm in that season now I feel like I'm in like a glam season right now and um but yeah so it's just a matter of, of of just doing things that I like to do honestly and part of it has to be okay are people gonna like this and then the bigger and more important part of it though is I have to like it and I have to more than like it I have to love it and I have to tell you guys that everything that I put out every piece of content I put out I love it okay I don't put anything out that I'm just like meh all right it's all right I don't put out content like that so even the stuff that may not get as many views you know 
that's okay because I know that it's still something that I'm proud of. And at the end of the day, that's my goal. My goal is to always put out things that I'm proud of and that I feel good about, that I feel great about. And because I'm working in my purpose and because I'm doing what I believe God wants me to do, he's allowing me to flourish doing something that I love that I feel like I would do without being paid. But I'm being paid because God knows that I'm working and doing the thing that he wishes me to do in my life. So it like, it works hand in hand. Like when you finally tap into what you truly want to do in life for that period, for that season or whatever, things just happen. Things just move smoothly and they work somehow. Somehow, some way they work. So yeah, I think I'm done. <laughs> I think I'm good now. I don't even know how long this video is going to be. Based on this recording, I feel like it's going to be long as hell. So if you got to this point, kudos to you, okay, for sticking through with me. And I really appreciate you guys for watching. Let me know if we should do another q and I feel like this was super successful. Uh, let me know questions down below if you are concerned or confused about anything that I said in this video today. And until the next time, I will see you guys. Mwah. Love you. Have a blessed one. Bye.